Hey there, avid listeners. Thanks again for tuning in to Sin's Workshop. Hope you're having a wonderful day. All right, today we're going to be talking about A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This is the prequel series to The Hunger Games. Now, I know what you're all thinking. It's about President Snow. How are we going to like this? You know what? It was an incredible narrative, and it was an incredible story, and I have to say it was remarkable. To say the least, it really was remarkable remarkable because of how well written it was i my like a lot of readers out there was a little disheartened to see that this novel was going to be about presidents now i think a lot i think a lot of us were hoping for a novel of pre hunger game world um you know the rebellion the war not the 10th Hunger Games, and certainly not President Snow. So, admittedly, I was a little defa- deflated with the announcement. However, something in my gut, you know, something told me, I need to read this book. I need to buy this book. I have to own it. And I'm so glad I pre-ordered it. I'm so glad I read it. And it just blew me away. It really did. I thought it was... A such an interesting look at who President Snow was. Now, I know what you're thinking. Am I going to like Snow? No, you're not going to like Snow. Definitely not. There is no way he's going to win you over. However, you do get to understand him. There's this new level of depth to his characterization that explains why he is the way he is. I mean, you have to you have to figure in this novel he's on the verge of poverty um during the war when he was uh i guess eight years old i mean he witnessed a lot of horrors everyone i think thinks oh the capital didn't suffer during the first war no in fact they did um i mean he witnessed cannibalism he witnessed people dropping dead of starvation because of the war and he lost his father and most of their income because of the war so he has a lot of resentment so much of the novel is him acting like he's still part of the first class when right now he's not (coughs) he really isn't part of the first class he's just pretending to be again you know he's pretty much living off of broth and whatever leftovers his cousin Tigress can bring home from her job as an intern, you know, interning fashion designer. So we do get to see a different side of Snow. We get to see his innermost thoughts. And what I also think is really interesting is this is the 10th Hunger Games. We do see sympathizers in the prequel series living in the capital. You know, that's why they're able to succeed in their rebellion. They're definitely sympathizers. But here, you're really seeing vocal sympathizers. You're seeing people who sympathize with the Hunger Games, with these kids who are chosen, and... People are saying this is wrong. You know, they are human beings. We need to stop this. This is wrong. Even Snow, his innermost thoughts give him away. And I think that that's such an interesting shift in his characterization because we all understand him as this cold-hearted, calculated man. However, what I thought was really cool is the fact that he reminds me a lot of Lex Luthor. You know, Lex Luthor is a villain hands down however all his decisions are based on fear he thinks he's doing much like presidents know they think everything they're doing is for safety and security and for the benefit of everyone else and i think that that's a really interesting shift because you get to see where that's coming from you know president snow is a man who grew up during a time of war and it has left i think a lot of scars on his psyche so you get to under 
understand snow. And that's what I really thought was amazing of this story, how we're understanding him. I mean, I was honestly blown away by the characterization. And I loved how Lucy Gray, she's the polar opposite of Katniss. She has a rebellious spark to her. She's from District 12. Those are the only similarities she has with Katniss Everdeen. Because she is such a polar opposite. She is as opposite as you can get. She's colorful. She likes to sing. She likes to dance. She is a performer at heart. And she just wants to be left alone. That's it. But she is in mind showing everyone. She's like, well, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die in style. And I'm going to take people with me. She's really great as a character. I really thought that that was interesting to see her relationship with Snow kind of blossom. Because she has a lot of effect on him. She, his love for her and then anger of her helped shape the Hunger Games into what he, what they are. He wanted to make sure she was fed and taken care of. So he thought she, he thought up the idea of sponsorships. And after, you know, he wanted her to win, basically. So he used whatever he was able to do to help her win as a mentor. You get to see how her influence of snow shaped the Hunger Games as to what we know of them as now. And I think, once again, that that is really incredible writing. It's it's such incredible storytelling. And there are so many Easter eggs. So many Easter eggs to the original series. They're like, ah, it broke my heart. It made me happy. It made me feel things. I'm so glad I read this book. I cannot begin to tell you how much I love this book. So, uh, you know what? I I definitely have to recommend this novel. Um... If you're a fan of the Hunger Games series, you don't have to like Snow to appreciate this novel. You just, you're understanding that there are a lot of facets to being a human being. There are lots of shades of gray to his characterization. And I like that. I I think it's realistic and I think it offers a more contemporary look at a villain, how people are multifaceted. And what makes a villain is... He's, he's deluded. You know, he's so stuck on that war. You know, he's so stuck on trying to make sure it doesn't repeat that he hurt himself because he forced its repetition, basically. So, you know, I think it really is an incredible look at um, humanity. You know, I think it's great to see the underdog from number 12 be Snow's mentee. I honestly do think that this is an incredible story. And I, th- oh gosh, I can't, I, I can't recommend this novel enough. You're not going to fall in love with Snow. You're not going to sympathize with him, but you are going to understand him. And I think that that's really crucial in this story. Now, um, I have to highly recommend this novel. I'm going to go ahead and give A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes five stars because it totally deserves it. Now, if money's tight, please check out the book from your local library. But if money's not too tight, please purchase the book off of bookshop.org. Percentage of all sales do go to a local bookstore or a bookstore of your choosing. Or go to a bookstore. You know, if one is open and available to you, go to the bookstore Barnes Noble, um, Books A Million. You can purchase books on IndieBound. Um, Book Depository, Better World Books, Barnes & Noble Online. Just please avoid Amazon. (laughs) They get enough business. They don't need our book business too. And on that note, I hope you all will continue to support me by liking this podcast and sharing it with all your book-loving friends. Have a great rest of your day. And as always, happy reading.